Encryption is a method of protecting data. Encryption uses algorithms to scramble data into an unreadable format. Encryption keys are used to encrypt and decrypt data by applying a certain algorithm. Data at rest and data in motion have different levels or different methods of encryption. There's different ways to encrypt data at rest and there's different ways to encrypt data in motion. The level of encryption complexity is usually measured in the, level, the number of bits. So with advanced encryption standard AES, you would measure AES 128 or 128 bit or AES 256 and it'd be 256 bits. And that would include oftentimes an initialization vector that we talked about earlier. So to decrypt data, attackers need to ascertain the encryption key. They need to find the correct key so that that data can be decrypted. So all the types of attacks, all types of cryptography attacks are designed to gain that key, whether that would be to steal the key or to guess the key or to use a list of known keys until the right one works. Think of it as an actual physical key that the attacker needs to find out. Either they have a key and they're able to open a lock, a physical lock, or they guess the key by, say they have a, a key ring, they have a list of known keys, and they try each key until one of them works. Or they do like a brute force attack, and that would be like the attacker picking the lock. They would try every possible combination, every twist and turn possible until the lock opens. And the level of complexity of the lock can be the level of bit size, if that analogy helps you. So a collision attack occurs when you have two different messages that have the same cryptographic hash. Okay, so once encryption is applied to the message, you'll have what's known as a cryptographic hash, or what's the, what the message looks like, what, uh, what's left over the scrambled portion of the data. It's possible to have two different messages that are completely different, but they would have the same cryptographic hash, and that's where a collision attack comes in. Some uh, encryption algorithms are more susceptible to this, usually with weak initialization vectors, like 802.11 that we talked about uh, a couple videos ago. Digital signatures are also susceptible to collision attacks. So imagine this scenario, you have an attacker that would create two documents with identical hashes, okay? The, doc, uh, the attacker would have document A signed by user one with a digital signature. So that digital signature is applied to that document. Then the document would take the digital signature from that document A and apply it to document B because document B has the same cryptographic hash. The attacker would then pass off document B as a signed copy and send it over to another user. So anybody who received document B would think it would be signed by user one because the attacker transferred that digital signature between the messages and that was only possible because those messages had the same cryptographic hash. A birthday attack is a specific form of collision attack. So this all gets its name from the birthday problem, where essentially 253 people are needed to have a greater than 50% chance that one of these people share a birthday with you. Okay? That's you specifically. Now, you only need 23 people to have a greater than 50% chance that any of those two people share the same birthday. And this is because in the first example, you're just trying to match a birthday to one specific person. In the second example, you're trying to match a birthday between any two people in a room. So attackers use this concept to their advantage to look for matches between hashes. 
So they only need to find a match between two hashes. They don't need to find a match between a specific hash and one other, and many other types of hashes. They're just looking for two hashes that are identical. So when they find two hashes that are identical, it helps them crack that encryption. Known plain text is essentially knowing a piece of ciphertext and how uh, that ciphertext will encrypt a certain string of characters or a certain word. So a good example of this dates back all the way to World War II where the Allies in their attempt to decrypt access communications would create bogus reports and say, oh, hey, you know, this island is out of water. Okay. And then the Axis over the radio would send encrypted messages and water would be clearly be in part in, uh, inside that message, right? Or prevalent within that message because they're trying to report on the Allies' activity. So the Allies are saying, okay, water, 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 water. And then the Axis report that, oh, hey, water, water, something about water. And then the Allies look at that message and say, okay, well, this word appears more prevalently than all these other messages, maybe that's water. And, you know, through trial and error, they're able to determine certain words. So essentially knowing a bit of ciphertext or how ciphertext would encrypt a certain string or a certain word would help attackers figure out the rest of the attack or, or the rest of the, uh, the message. Oftentimes, encryption attacks are more automated so this isn't going to be as common in the modern era, but it's still a concept that you need to understand. Dictionary attacks use a list or a dictionary of common words, like just a huge list, and they have the hash values for those words, and then they uh, are able to conduct attacks using that dictionary on a password hash or on the password the login mechanism itself. Rainbow tables are literally massive lists of, of passwords. These can be very uh, large files, many gigabytes in size, and attackers will take an encrypted password hash and then compare it to the rainbow table to look for a match. Okay, so they have this huge list of hashes. All they have to do is find, they take the, the hash that they've intercepted and do a search within that rainbow table for any matches. If they find a match, then they'll know the password. Brute force attacks are trying every possible combination. Normally with online logins, this is very difficult because uh, you know, logins, well, you only have so many attempts to log in, okay? If security measures are implemented properly, that type of attack against the login mechanism or against the authenticator becomes pretty difficult. So what attackers will do is they'll do this offline. They'll try and guess the password hash by trying many different passwords until they get a match. The problem with brute force attacks is if you have a significantly complex password, you know, say you have an eight character password with numbers, letters, upper, lower case, and special characters, it's going to take a great deal of processing power for an attacker to guess that password, to do this type of brute force attack and try every possible combination because the number of combination is exponentially larger than a password, say, five characters long with just numbers and letters. So the processing power is the main limiting factor with a brute force attack. A downgrade attack takes a system and forces it to use an outdated version or a version with known security flaws. A lot of times this has been done with uh, transport layer security to downgrade tra transport layer security to a version that has known security vulnerabilities. Then attackers, they already know how they're gonna attack those vulnerabilities. They go for those vulnerabilities instead. Instead of attacking the latest version of the operating system or the, uh, the encryption mechanism for data in transport like TLS, they'll just revert that version to a previous version and attack that. Weak implementation is 
what happens when any one portion of a security framework is just poorly done, okay? So if there's something that's outdated or their default security settings exist on that uh, piece of hardware like a firewall or there's open unnecessary ports, anything that has just security flaws that are the result of human uh, overlook overlooked by security professionals, you know, or they're just the result of human failures or human flaws. Those are weak implementations. So say you have a secure banking network, you know, you have perimeter firewalls, you have intrusion prevention systems, you have defense in depth, you have a really good uh, monitoring, you have logging in place, everything looks really good. But then that banking network communicates with its customers through SSL version 2.0, which has many known security vulnerabilities. That would be example weak implementation. So no matter how many security controls you have within the network, that one little piece of weak implementation, that weak link in the chain, is going to compromise your network.